U.S.-China military contacts resume. China proceeds to state its demands to the U.S. President Biden and President Xi of China held a mini-summit last month in California. One of the agreements from the meeting was the reestablish of military-to-military contacts between the two countries. These types of communications had been severed over a year ago due to the Chinese protesting then-Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi visiting Taiwan despite Chinese threats. This week, the U.S. Air Force General Charles Brown, who is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, held a video conference with Chinese counterpart General Liu Zhenli. Though such high-level ties are important to avoid misunderstandings, it was clear that this turned into another opportunity for the Chinese government to lecture the U.S. The tensions in the South China Sea have, have escalated in the recent months as the Philippines assert their interests in the Second Thomas Shoals that have led to tense clashes between China and the Philippines, including multiple ramming incidents of Filipino boats by the Chinese. This has led to the Philippines initiating closer defense cooperation with the U.S., and this includes the Filipino government clearly citing the defense treaty between the U.S. and the Philippines to the Chinese. The Filipino government has also conducted several naval exercises in the region with regional powers to the annoyance to the Chinese. The Filipinos also have not been deterred in resupplying its outposts in the Second Thomas Shoals, despite the Chinese efforts to interdict the, interdict the resupply missions. The U.S., for its part, has reaffirmed the defense agreement with the Philippines and in response has participated in several exercises with the Philippines and has stepped up freedom of nav- navigation missions in the South China Sea. The reason for the The reasons this is an issue for the Chinese is that the Chinese government claims nearly the entire South China Sea as its sovereign territory, contrary to international law. The U.S. and other countries in the region refuse to acknowledge China's claims, and this is becoming an area of concern to China. Because despite its threats, the Philippines and U.S. are ignoring China's claims, and in the case of the Philippines, it is ignoring China's provocations. The Chinese foreign ministry responded this week by stating that Chinese-Filipino relations were at a crossroads in what it views as the Filipinos trespassing in its territory. The second Thomas Shoals is about 600 miles from China and only about 100 miles from the Philippines and is within the internationally recognized exclusive economic zone of the Philippines. China stated that if the Philippines collude with foreign forces that it calls, quote, ill-intentioned, end quote, and are veiled references to the U.S., Japan, and Australia that it would defend its rights to respond resolutely. President Xi has also stated that Chinese forces in the area need to do more to protect its territory in the South China Sea. The Filipinos have further antagonized the Chinese by referring the disputed region in the South China Sea as the West Philippine Sea. The U.S.-Philippine Defense Agreement was signed in 1951 and predates the Chinese establishment of the Nine Dash Line and its claims over the South China Sea. The Chinese threatening the Philippines over a treaty that has been enforced for over 70 years is a sign of arrogance of the Chinese claims that it claims supersede defensive agreements or international established economic zones. The Chinese Foreign Ministry has also protested the U.S., accusing it of invading its sovereign territory when it conducted freedom of navigation exercises in November. The U.S. has kept up the pressure this week with the aircraft carrier USS Carl Vinson patrolling in the area and had a poor call in Singapore this week. The escalating rhetoric and the clashes between the Philippines and China were the backdrop for the call between General Brown and General Zen Li. The normal diplomatic pleasantries were exchanged about the need for cooperation, but the Chinese pressed the issue more directly. It stated that Taiwan was a Chinese internal affair and the U.S. should not interfere. China added that the U.S., quote, should respect China's core interests and major concerns, end quote, which includes the South China Sea, which they stated that the U.S. should respect China's territorial sovereignty, including all of the South China Sea. This was a statement towards both the U.S. and U.S. cooperation with the Philippines and its conducting of freedom of the navig- navigation exercises. The U.S. has protested the Chinese act- activities and provocations in the South China Sea that could lead to misunderstandings, but it did not use this call to focus on these issues. Instead, the U.S. has been pushing to reestablish this contact, contact attempted to state its goals without provoking the Chinese ire. The Chinese response did not waste the opportunity to directly dictate to the U.S. 
that it is being aggressive to Chinese interests and that China expects the U.S. to accept the Chinese position in full if it wants to avoid an escalation. The response is not out of bounds for this type of contact, but also demonstrates that the China views these types of contacts to be one-way one communication. China is leaving no room for compromise or negotiation in its territorial claims and expects all parties to accept Chinese demands and to do so compliantly. The U.S. will most likely not be deterred by this rhetoric, but the fact that the U.S. was much more passive on the call when compared to the Chinese is an area of concern. It can also be seen that China views these types of contacts have no benefit to China, but is desired by the U.S., so it will use it as a bargaining chip to get concessions from the U.S. The U.S. strategy for this call seems to be mistakenly weak and will probably embolden China.